Alrighty guys, good evening, welcome to the Gosu League showdown between NextKZ and Team Zero. This is, I believe, our opening match of the Gosu League Season 5. I am Gods commentating the first match. Most of the matches will be commentated by Purge and Co. But joining me is Pain at Gold, formerly from Team Quantic. Now he's up to some mysterious plans which he can't talk about, but... Dun, dun, dun. How are you doing? What are we in for here? A lot of stand-ins, but this is a very, very interesting team for Team Zero, or the GDB team as they're still tagged up as in-game. So. Yeah. As... I'm actually looking at their icon right now. Oh, it's Zero. Like, uh, I get it. Wait. I, I don't. <laughs> what, what, what am yeah, I looking it's at? It's from, like, uh, an anime. Ah, I, I see, I see. Yeah. Mm. It, it's all coming back to me, but um, this I guess this this roster of theirs looks pretty damn strong. Admiral Bulldog as a stand-in. Um, Aki was in here before. I guess he's no longer in here. I thought Aki was going to yeah. be playing. I even tweeted that, but he left. So Admiral Bulldog's come in. We've got Beaters, Eternal Envy. I guess those are the two support players. Maybe that's why they threw Aki out. They said yeah, there's too, ma too many support players. <laughs> you yeah, kind of it fits a lot better now. They had three support players subbing, but uh, I'm sure, like, Aki, Eternal... Well, I don't know, but Eternal Envy and Beat is more support-specific players, but Aki, I feel, is someone who could play a solo-type role, but... Then Bamboo and Black, so... I, I don't know, this is a scary-looking roster that's just been put together. Next KZ, they've got their full lineup, as far as I know. And Batrider was given away. Oh. You know, well... They get TA. I assume they're going to take TA here, just because of how strong a mid lane or even safe lane here he is. He doesn't... Yeah, there we go. TA. Ooh. That's, that's something. Um, I, I guess they're confident with Wiss, even with all the stand-ins. It's a, a hero that Empire use all the time, and a lot of these European teams really just love to use. I think the one problem for me with Wiss is if, if teams try to go aggressive, like aggressive try lane against it, Wiss is just doesn't match up well there. He kind of shines more against the, the suicide solos and in the mid game. Yeah, unless you have a hero like CK, then Wisp does all right. But CK is banned out, so we see a we see a disruptor pick, which is actually really really good against Wisp because you can just send back the non Wisp hero pretty much right away, and then the Wisp teleport becomes ineffective as a team fight yep. mechanism. And, well, but, you've got Admiral Bulldog, Bulldog so you, you pick Lone Druid, of course. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Admiral Bulldog. What heroes does he play? Um, Lone Druid. Yeah, I think I've seen him play Puck once, maybe? I don't, I'm not sure. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, Lone Druid. I, I'd say this is his go-to hero. I'm not really surprised that that Zero, Bamboo, Bamboo, actually in the captain seat here, has picked that up. It'd be interesting yeah. to see if they run it. In the in the safe lane, maybe in the suicide lane, I'm not sure exactly how they want to play this. I feel Lone Druid as a suicide hero has sort of been phased out and isn't really the way that he's played much anymore. Yeah, I have a feeling that's how it's going to be run this game because uh, I know Eternal Envy a bit and they always run it long lane. Okay. Uh, Admiral Bulldog frequently runs it long lane. So. Okay. Well, I imagine I'm surprised. Uh, Eternal Envy is the captain for No Tide Hunter, yeah? Yeah, he is. Okay. Mm -hmm. I'm surprised that they let Bat through for first pick. I know that, like, I was talking to Brax earlier, and he plays for LGD, and, of course, for those of you who didn't tune in, but uh, he said basically giving Bat up is like an auto win. The hero is so good right now. And actually, you know what other hero hasn't been picked yet? THD. Ooh, yeah. THD, neither his, I mean, neither his Keeper of the Light, a uh, hero I think that's really just becoming top support pick and even getting banned out, at least, especially by the, in the Asian scene, but European teams, they, they were kind of the ones who pioneered the Keeper of the Light almost, though. Yeah, they were, especially Empire, they were using it as a super strong support, like, damage dealer. Basically, they would just have enough stun to lock a hero down long enough for the blast to charge, and then they would take out heroes and, like, even if you couldn't really defend against it because they used like a CK Wisp to uh, set it up and that's like three seconds of stun or they would use a Bane, a, a support Bane and they would sleep and then that would be four seconds to charge the blast up. Yeah. So it, it did so much damage and yeah, it was it worked out really well for them but a lot of teams have caught on. Yep, so 
For for zero here, well, I, I guess we're looking at Black Zero in the safe lane to go with the Wisp. And when you've already got the damage coming from Templar Assassin Lone Druid, I guess we're looking for something, maybe even something like a Black Pudge. Maybe a Sven. He's been really popular lately. I think Black mentioned he he's kind of hopes to be playing Sven at some point soon. But I I feel this Wisp just needs that sort of aggressive hero to go with him at the, at this point. He does. Yeah, he completely does. So we're looking at one Wisp hero, one Wisp get along with hero. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Wisp new I mean, best friend. I, yeah, we've we've seen like Tiny, Blacks play Tiny quite frequently. So that would be. Uh, just a uh, conventional guess. Will but... they go for Tiny when they've got Templar and Lone Druid they, they, already? Like, I feel like that's a lot of farm, a lot of already DPS coming out from those heroes alone. I mean, we've seen crazier things. <laughs> no. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. As far as the lanes go, it, it works perfectly, I think, and we'll see what next KZ want to pick up. They've got... They, they need to just basically round off their trial, and they've got the Disruptor, they need some kind of carry or semi-carry, probably another support. The Jakiro, Keeper of the Light, I feel, would just... Jakiro especially, oh, goes well against Templar Assassin, and even slowing down Lone Druid, the Ice Path is just ridiculous. I, I kind of... It just annoys me how strong Ice Path is, because, like, you compare, I, you compare Earthshaker to Jakiro. They're pretty much the same hero, except Jakiro can spam Ice Path in lane, and it's... Yeah. It does so much, and it, it just does so much more. It's got a shorter cooldown, it's got low mana cost, you've got a bigger mana pool, and ES is just like, well, one Fissure got a clarity. There's yeah. nothing really separating the two heroes. Yeah, um, THD has auto fire. <laughs> yeah. Hero. THD is just like a 10 times better version of an Earthshaker, and I don't know, Earthshaker needs some changes. That's what I'm, I'm, or your THD needs some, some nerves. But uh, Sven gets picked up, so. I guess that's what we're going to be seeing going the way of black. Attack! It's, it's really weird not seeing a THD in the game, honestly. I, I really feel like that hero is just spectacularly powerful. And uh, this is a very no Tidehunter lineup that uh, Zero is running right now. Maybe influenced by the no Tidehunter players. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I think it is influenced by them a lot. Yeah. Uh, they love to run their Sven carry. They took down some team... 2-1. I forget what team it was. Do you know what team they played They beat recently? Empire. They beat Empire recently. Yeah, Empire. That's it. With Sven. Yep. Well, I feel that... Uh, yeah, with, with Bamboo, actually... I mean, Bamboo's the one drafting, but I feel that Eternal Envy as, like, the kind of... The main, only really captain-type player in this lineup. He's the one maybe doing a lot of the suggestions here. He's actually playing the Templar Assassin here, Eternal Envy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. In interesting to see. Is this a Bamboo Enchantress or something? It's a Bamboo Wisp. Apparently... Well, I think it's a Bamboo Wisp. It should be. I think Vita's is going to play the Enchantress. Because Vita's doesn't play Wisp for EG. Like, EG are pretty known for Milk and Vita's not playing Wisp. Yep. Wow. Vita's is going to play Wisp, huh? Okay. Wow. So... Well, his team doesn't even trust him with it. No, I'm just kidding. I don't know <laughs> how that works. But I, I, I think it's of his own volition that he doesn't play Wisp on EG. Well, we've got some sweet-looking Golden Roshan Korea. Golden which, Roshan which you, Korea. you know all about, I imagine. Oh, yeah, <laughs> I know all about the Golden Roshan. <laughs> Having several of those yourself. So Eternal Envy is playing the solo mid. Black is going to be playing that Sven with uh, the Enchantress of Bamboo, the Wisp. They're going offensive trailing as well. I, I like this. I think Lone Druid can just really do well against the Bounty Hunter at top. Can just completely dominate him and... We'll see how next KZ try react to that as their trial and with with this Luna pickup. That's wow! I didn't even notice there's a Luna pickup. I should actually like focus on this game. He has he has side lane items as well. I think the best choice upon seeing the lanes for next KZ is just to throw Luna mid and throw Bat in the tri lane because Bat just destroys tri lanes completely. Uh, if they have a Luna sinking disruptor tri lane, that is really weak. Yeah, Luna. So I I would much rather see a Bat. Disruptor, Sanking, Tri-Lane. Luna's and, gone I mean, passive if, level 1 too, so not going to see any Lucent Beams early on. Yeah, I really think that they should... I don't know if they've seen it yet, so I can't really say. Okay, they see this Fen. They have to assume at this point that it's an aggressive Tri-Lane. I, I don't know, I think it's, it looks like NextKZ just aren't willing to switch things up. They Ooh, they're going to go in, they're going to look for a kill. They've got oh, Bounty Hunter with them. Night. They airball. Gets the illusions. That's... Unfortunate for five seven zero, and this is giving 
Bulldog just complete empty lane at top lane, at least for now. Bounty Hunter will make his way up there. He'll quickly realize that it's a 1v1 matchup, which is slightly to his advantage. And yeah, this is going to be the trial lane bottom. It has Enchant... Where is the... Oh, Enchantress is top. Never mind. So Enchantress has gone towards the top lane. We'll be looking to maybe come for some early ganks on Bounty Hunter. Not the easiest hero to gank, though, with just Enchantress and Lone Droid, even with the Sentry Wards. Bounty Hunter can get out of there if he's fast. Mm -hmm. I'm just wondering how this is going to play out uh, when the Disruptor actually comes back to the lane and uh, starts tri-laning against this Fen Wisp. I, I f I'm surprised they go offensive tri lane with a Wisp in support. It just doesn't. He can't really do much to help this tri lane out. And when you, it's, sorry, it's not even a tri lane they've gone offensive with. It's just a dual lane with a Wisp Fen. There's not really oh, no. much they're offering. And it looks yeah, like. Yeah, Bambo's already messed up. Uh, he smoked only himself and not the creep. Oh no, bottom lane though, they're going in on black. Black is on the run. The tether, maybe this is what they're thinking with this dual lane here. The, the movement speed from the tether, but it's not going to be enough. Sanking escapes the damage from Wiss, and this is going to be a double kill to Disruptor early on. And this, I, I'm, yeah, I'm just, that's... I don't know what they're thinking with this, this offensive dual lane. It's really yeah. surprising. That's exactly what I was thinking was going to happen, actually. Uh, yeah. Once the Disruptor got back to the lane. I, I just don't see them being able to take this lane on. If they had the Enchantress really early on with the Creeple 2, it would, yeah, it would if work. if they had Enchant, for sure, they could have. Even with Enchant, the Wisp doesn't offer much, but now Enchantress is here, so we're going to see Bamboo come in from behind, looking for a kill. They've gone in, Black starting things off with a stun, the Tether is there with a stun. Clap hits, I think, both of those two heroes, so they should be a double kill. They get Luna, they get Disruptor, and they've turned things around. This is kind of what they needed from the start, though. Yeah, great, great double kill to uh, balance it out. It's going to help a lot. And top lane, Bulldog's finding himself having to contest with some pulls from this bounty hunter, but Bulldog is uh, he's, he's such an experienced lone droop, but I feel like this is a lane that he will be very happy with. And pretty much, I mean, the bounty hunter's just got his first creep kill, so bounty hunter already off to wow. a struggling start. Wow, that's, that's horrible. <laughs> yeah, bounty hunter should do much better than... As is. Visibility. I feel like one creep kill in the solo lane is really weak at this point. He he took a bit of time getting up there. He did go for that early first blood near the bottom river, not finding it, and he did eventually yeah. up there. But he's he's really had a tough lane time. Ooh, bottom lane. There is going to yeah. be a bit of engagement here. Bamboo's coming from the side. He's going to get caught out. Stun does hit 570 as well as the tether damage. Glimpse back for the Sven, and that is not going to save the life of the Sanking. Sanking. Gonna be gonna get some revenge as Wisp goes down and Sven still chasing. He's got no more stuns. He probably just wants to back off here. Clap. Is there any more claps? Ursa does drop it, but Ursa com completely on his own. And five for three at the, pretty much all at this bottom lane as Batrider actually picks up a kill, living on 20 HP near the bottom river. So that's a big pickup for Mantis because he was actually being slightly outlast hit at this mid lane by the TA. So getting that kill will help him out a lot. Yeah, and uh. Rogues, thanks be with the Sanking actually picked up an Invis rune, which allowed him to initiate on Bambo pretty easily right there. For an easy kill. And Bambo's back in this jungle. They they know where he is by the looks of things, so at least Sanking just spotted him. I feel like this is something they should look to be punishing. Just send two, three heroes, go yeah. and try gank Bambo on his own, because the Wisp fan can't really get there immediately. And Even just sending two heroes... Award it if they even had a ward in their jungle, they could see all of Enchantress's moves. They've, they've gone in on black though, the glimpse brings him back. They do get the stun off with the Sand King. One more right click, Luna gets the kill this time around. Here comes the counter gank from Bamboo, but his creep isn't there. His creep's lag behind. Stalker actually salving himself up, and it's next KZ's 570. Burrow strikes out, he's... Oh, nope, Sandstorm. Is there another clap? Ursa clap on cooldown, they get the Enchantress now, and two more kills going the way of next KZ. This tri lane's working out for them. Yeah, something to account for is all of the heroes actually hit incredibly hard with that increased damage of yeah. 22 Lunar Blessing. Ours. Wow, I, I thought that was just a range draw, but actually Sanking getting, gets it as well. Alright, yeah. so it's allies, any allies in general. Sanking doesn't have any money here, they've gone in on Luna. is there going to be enough damage? The Wisp needs to get those little spirits flying out, they are going to find Luna now. Luna going to go back in, just try it, fight his way out of this one. Beat is going to pay the price. One for one trade at the bottom lane, Sven. He wants more, he's got another stun, he may... Oh no, it gets dodged by the Sandstorm it looks like, although it does find the Disruptor. Two kills going the way of Team Zero, and well, the constant aggression at bottom lane, it, it continues.
Yeah, this is pretty crazy overall. So I, many kills going on. They just, this bottom lane, neither team is backing up at all. Trading kills, and does it? I, I mean, I'd say right now, next KZ have, have a slight advantage. They, they're coming out on top of more of these classes, and the big problem is going to be Bounty Hunter. When he gets involved with some tracks as well, uh, it, it could be painful, but it is Lone Druid completely dominating the CS charts, and that, to me, is the biggest worry for next KZ. Mm -hmm. Ooh. Bottom lane, Check here comes the whist dive. Yeah, he's Sven going in with his son. Luna has ultimate. Luna's actually level 6. He's going to drop that. Not enough damage. It gets spread out too much. Disruptors here. It looks like Black going to go down to some tower aggro. And now here comes Sankin. They're going to get 2 in return at least for this. Beat is under the tower. Yeah, Centaur oh. is going to try to keep Beaters alive. He gets glimpsed back though. Nice play from Disruptor. The kill goes to Sankin. As, uh, that's going to help out Sankey. He wants to get up those fast arcane boots. Batrunners rotate towards the bottom lane. He's going to run right into the Enchantress. Mantis wants Bamboo. Bamboo out of mana by the looks of things. Doesn't have his heal. And uh, he's going to get brought oh, nice. up on top of that cliff. Bamboo, nowhere to go, nowhere to hide. He's not even going to cut down the trees for him. Bamboo just going to accept his fate. Yeah. So. You know what's really worrying for uh, Team Zero right now is that their Templar Assassin is losing so badly middle. Uh, he's actually been forced to jungle against Batrider. And that can never be a good thing when your well, mid soul is forced to jungle. He's he's a level behind. He's still done okay as far as actual raw CS goes. He's still close, but I think the level difference is really the big issue here. And I, I don't know. And Eternal Envy, he can't even go look for some ganks now. He is level 6. We may see him looking to roam. It's going to be bottom lane though. Next KZ, 570 goes in. They want Black. Black already with 3 deaths. Is this going to be his fourth? Is there a Lucent Beam? Yeah, there we go. Stalkat gets a kill and beat is probably going to go down as well. Lucent. Oh, I don't think... Will they even need it? They're just going to walk on in. Double kill for Stalkat. 13 to 6, and... I mean, this is this is early days still. Stalkat not farming ridiculously well. Not nowhere near this lone druid, but... All these kills definitely... Going to help out oh, yeah, they add next KZ a lot. Big time. A kill is what? Like, 10, 12 creep kills? Well... This lone druid is going super late game. He's got a Midas. He's had this Midas a while as well. He's already used this Midas once. He's going to get ganked to the top lane, it is Mantis coming in, and this is not what Bulldog wants to see. Track is on him as well, a lot of gold going to be going the way of next KZ if they can get this kill down. Goes the flame break, Bulldog still on the run, entangles, there was one but he needs another, and Batrider gets a kill, a track kill as well on top of that. Bamboo coming in too late, Bamboo, I don't know if he wants to actually be here as track on him, and he is getting chased down. Flame break going to push him back, Bamboo going to feed away another kill this top lane. Oh dear. Oh dear. Yeah, meanwhile, Black actually died bottom to the Luna. So that's another death to his name. He's 2 and 5 right now, he only has 18 creep kills, he's not doing well, this aggressive tri-lane is not working out. Usually you don't see aggressive tri-lanes last this long, because there's an advantage gained based off like 1 or 2 kills, you know? Yeah. So usually they just back out, and uh, one team just backs off and decides to cut the losses, farm a different lane, but Black just keeps going back to this lane, uh, as the dual lane mostly, and uh, they just keep going back. And it's pretty strange to see. I haven't seen this much, but they're sticking to the aggressive tri lane despite a lot of. Oh my gosh, this disruptor is level eight. That's crazy. <laughs> at this all the kills, like it's only I, eight minutes. In he's the game. been in twelve kills. Uh, that's where it's all coming from. All the XP from these kills. Luna's level eight as well. That's insane. Yeah. It's really ridiculous, and everything kind of going next KZ's way, and I think a Wiss just being proven to not be a very good he's not really an aggressive support hero to go in a trial lane, if you have something like a Jakira or Venomance, maybe they are going to relocate towards the mid lane here comes Wisp and Sven, they're looking for a, a return fire here, Bounty Hunter, he is getting spotted by this Sentry Ward and it looks like they're going to get a Bounty Hunter out of this but that's all they get, a lot of heroes converging on this middle lane Oh, oh he made it and bottom lane, it is going to be oh, black, no. he's left alone is this is gonna be enough? Oh, big three, big three man stun, but that's not gonna be enough. And uh, this T1 tower at bottom probably, probably gonna be going down as well. There's just no HP left on that. Already treads mask of mask of madness or morbid mask, and probably gonna see a helm of the dominator up after this tower at bottom. Yeah, heroes are just leveling at an unreal rate right now, especially in a tri lane. Like, uh, you see Admiral Bulldog, who is the dominant solo. He's level 8, almost level 9, 300 XP off. You don't ever see, like, a Sanking that was in a tri lane, a Disruptor that was in a tri lane, and a Luna that was in a tri lane higher level than the solos that yeah. were, like, in their dominant lanes, you know? And and with a Midas. It's, it's Midas, giving him, Midas is giving yeah. him bonus XP as well, so... <laughs> 
The support. Two point five times XP. That's crazy. Disruptor's higher level than the lone druid. Like, how, how does that work? I don't. I don't know. That just goes to show how many kills next case are getting here. They may want to look to kill Admiral Bulldog again soon because he's getting. A lot of farm. I feel like the one kill alone is not enough to slow him down. He's, he's got that minus, and he's going to be looking to continue farming. Next is he smoke up near the mid lane, so probably going to try to find this Templar Assassin first. A Disruptor with, like, levels is the most dangerous thing in the game, too. Like, that hero does not require any items. Like, it's nice to have some items, but he doesn't require any items. He just needs level 4 glimpse, maybe level 4 uh, kinetic field, but he just needs static storm, kinetic field, in level 4 glimpse and he's so useful all the time like it doesn't matter what situation he's in he's always going to be extremely useful yeah and next easy there smokes fail so they that's some good news for team zero they do spot things out they realize what's up and black has finally found some space to farm in this bottom lane and i mean he just keeps coming back and continues to die i mean he's on, he's on six deaths right now and it just there's no real lane for him to go to with Lone Druid occupying the top lane, you've got TA either at mid or in the jungle when mid, mid lane's not safe, so it's kind of making it really hard for Black to play this. He can't really take on that farming role, he just has to go around with the Wist, and I think he just needs to make space for the other carry heroes. Yeah, hope for kills. Oh, here we go, mid lane, they've gone in on Eternal Envy, he's been pulled back in tracked as well. This does not look good for him, Flame Break pushes him backwards, here comes the Wist, I believe, I heard a Wist noise, the Wist Sven have come in, yep. looking for the Bounty Hunter, they're going to get the kill on the Bounty Hunter, the problem is, can Next KZ turn this around, sorry, not Bounty Hunter, Disruptor they get, can they get turn this around, Bounty Hunter oh. is looking to poke, poke Black, his head in. he's having so much trouble navigating with oh. oh, oh, it's a trap, it's a trap. Go back. right into an Heavy epicenter, <laughs> yeah. they can't, they can't do oh. that, they just, like, uh, that is just, I don't know. Well, like, they go mid, they get a kill, and they're like, oh, sweet, you got a kill, and then it's like, oh, look, look who's waiting for you at bottom. Yeah. And, like, they weren't expecting that. I wasn't expecting no. that. So they definitely weren't expecting that. Oh, boy. Yeah. That. I mean, even though Black has sent deaths to his name, like, they've gotten a lot of kills, and experience slip, split between them. Like, Wisp hit a unusually fast level 6, Black is level 9, so he's not that far behind. And I mean, CS, I guess CS wise, it's, it's Team Zero with Lone Druid, he's, he's far ahead of the Luna, you've got Templar Assassin doing well as well, so they're not out of this game, they're just giving away a lot of kills as well as some track gold here and there, and we are going to find a clash in the jungle here. Bamboo's trying to use these creeps to deal with next AZ, big fire strike hits two he for heroes as well as the Spirit Bear. Spirit Bear is actually taking a lot of damage here, gonna have to be resummoned soon, Eternal Envy goes down as well on the TA, two kills drop. Next KZ, they're not done though, but they're going to have to be careful because here comes Team Zero. They bought back, they're ready to take this fight to Next KZ. Next KZ now, probably want to get out of here, probably got to go running, running for it. Mantis trying to escape. He drops a flame break, pushes them back, and he may just get out of here. Black's going to need another stun for this. Black does have it up. And this stun will secure, secure Mantis's fate. So they turn it around with a buyback. Three kills go the way of Team, yeah. team Zero and... I, I, that's kind of the kind of trade they need. Now they want to follow up with some Only towers as well. TP on bottom lane on Stalkite. Oh, yeah. Envy and uh, Vita is together. And Vita's a lot with. of damage coming out from Templar Assassin. Vita's almost went down to it, but... Yeah. He ended the unstoppable streak of Stalkite, and he is now a rich Wisp. This game, very, very back and forth as far as kills go, as far as Wisp just making it a very sort of hard to follow game with action happening all over the place. Wisp Got to make his way back to Fountain now, but two towers and drop at middle lane. I believe, unless next KZ can get here soon, and that's a lot of gold. No, nope, they're going to back off. A lot of gold regardless going the way to Admiral Bulldog. He's almost got his relic now, so yeah, Team Zero, good. with that one fight, it's pretty much leveled things, I want to say. Mm -hmm. And I was wondering how they were going to do in that fight, because a Scylla Bear doesn't really add that much to early team fights. Like, it's pretty much you hit heroes if you have a good position, and you're you have an advantageous position, but he picked up a kill there, at least one, and he came out on top overall. So. Oh, they found Eternal Envy in the jungle. Disruptor Ultimate sanking Epicenter. They use it all, but well worth it here. They're going to look to maybe try push down this bottom tier 2 tower. It's already taken a tiny bit of damage with Luna putting on some pressure there, and they're pinging it. No, they're going to back off. It's going to be mid lane, where Bounty Hunter has spotted out Black on this Sven. Going to try find the opening. 
If Black gets too close, ooh, doesn't actually... Hey, there we go, gets the track off, and that's the big thing here, just knowing where Black is when he's trying to defend, and it looks like next case he's decided they can't take mid, they're going to go towards his bottom lane, back up Stalcat. Stalcat's got decent farm, Treads, Helmet Dominator, Yasha at this point. He's already getting well yeah, on his way. Still only 800 ult, and he actually baited the TP this time. Oh dear. Glimpse onto Sven. They're going to just deal with the Wisp. I think they should have just left Sven there. They had it. They could have killed yeah. both. But they, pl they play it safe, and I they mean, want to make sure they get this tower. Yeah. They were worried about the Sven, because uh, they kn knew Sven didn't, have it, didn't use his stun. He actually didn't use his stun there. They all yep. got stunned by Tether. Okay. As weird as it seems. So yeah, yeah Sven had stun up. Sven in one hit would have been a dead Luna. Oh, and here we go, Black at mid lane. Ooh, the, the flame break actually helps him out a bit, and it's going to be Belaz on the bounty hunter who walks into a sentry ward. Batrider trying to help him out, no flame break up, and without that, can't really do too much. Belaz getting slowed down, but he's out of the sentry ward range. And does Mantis, does he want to go back in here? He's tempting the idea. Next KZ, I, I feel they're just getting slightly more crucial levels and items at this point in the game. I mean, sure they're trading kills, sure Team Zero is still in this, but we're going to see a Sanking halfway to his Blink Dagger. We've got a mech coming on Disruptor. Disruptor's level 11. Holy crap, how does that even happen? Lone Druid, though, his Radiant is, is just about up, so that's the one thing which Team Zero have going yeah. for them. And nothing is really happening for Sven. Oh. Like Black, he's here we go. They They found Admiral Bulldog here in the jungle here. Mantis does have his ultimate. Probably going to see him using that in just a second. Here comes backup, here yeah, comes Belaz. Belaz is really low though, and Entangle and some Spirit Bear hits could actually get a return by here. He needs to be careful, they need to kill him fast, and yeah, he goes right back in Viz. I like this decision here, and they do get the kill. Pretty straightforward, in fact, in the end. Yeah, Zero at pass. the same time, NTH is trying to sneak a Roshan, but next KZ is onto it. I don't... Oh, they're going in to stop it right now. But is there going to be in time? Oh. Sanking, he needs to get this stun off, gets his two-man stun. Roshan is still up, though. Disrupt your ultimate. Perfect ultimate. Aegis goes to Sven, though. Immediately dies. That's okay for next KZ, I feel. They're not going to be too upset with that. They will be if they lose Luna. Luna trying to fight his way out of this. Sven... Stun hits, and with Sven are on the run, he is an epicenter, takes out Templar Assassin. With Sven, there's nothing else they can do here to take this fight. Disruptor looking for maybe a or glimpse, Disruptor gets the glimpse. Up. And down will go with four kills to next KZ. 28 to 14. They get Roshan, they get Aegis, but not, it lasts about a, a, less than a second on that Sven, who was just so... I, I'd, say, I'd say Team Zero, lucky that that didn't go worse for them. Yeah, for sure. They definitely lucked out there. They had to make a... They had to make a risky play. I congratulate them for that. Like, it was good on their part. They're behind. They aren't really farming anything on Sven. They need to do something that uh, gets them back in the game. Well, their Silabear, who's their main carry at this point, is getting ganked by two heroes. So they went for the Roshan, and they were very close to getting it. Uh, very close to getting it without any response from Next KZ. Yeah. But they just missed it. It was, I mean, exactly, if, if Lone Druid do avoids that gank and that's his Radiance up, if they get the Roshan, that's an Aegis, as well as a lot of gold going their way without that fight. If, if they get those things going their way, they're in a good position, so I think it was a risk worth, worth taking. As a Black, Black's on the other side of the map. I don't know how we got here, but he's looking for Sven. Sven, yeah. um, well, he, he's not really being ganked here, but I'm, I'm just surprised that he's in this position at all. He's going to be walking towards, actually Luna walking over this trap. Black knows he's there, but Black walking right past this bat right. He's got backup on the way here with Sven and Templar, Wisp and Templar Assassin coming soon. Mantis is going to try to fly over these trees, try to get the hell out of there. Wisp, the spirits are scouting this out. He's, oh, he's relocating to the trees on the other side. That is not a, a winning game plan, I feel. Glimpse sends back this Sven. This is not a winning game plan. And I, I don't know. Beatus gets picked off. This is just all over the place from, from Team Zero. The kind of the stand-in effect is showing. Retreat, but I don't. Oh, are uh, they gonna get out with nothing? No, Black goes back in. Oh. Disconnect this coming out from so Luna. This is so uncoordinated at this point. Yeah, this is this is the stand-in effect. There's just no team cohesiveness whatsoever from this dire team. It was just that like, relocate to to the to, into the jungle. I I can't because it shows up on the mini map. Batrider just can see yeah. that little ping on the mini map and say, "Oh, great! I'll just turn around and." Then they're kind of stuck in no man's land. You've got That's exactly what Bad the did there. Back. Just Good. turned around, and Black right now is just stuck in the middle of nowhere. Like, well, oh, he's just gonna <laughs> hold position. No, yes, he's tracked. No, he's been spotted. This should be a kill. In comes Bamboo. I don't know, but it looks like they want to take this fight, but there is an eclipse up. Oh no, this Eternal is not envy. what they wanted to do. They wanted I... to minimize losses and just get Black out of there, but.
Decided Bulldog's to gonna get a kill. On. Bulldog will try redeem his team. Oh no, there's a mech up on Next KZ. Keeps him alive a little longer, but kill after kill going the way for the Next KZ for the most part. And Templar Assassin, lucky to still be alive as well. Templar Assassin almost has a blink dagger up. He is being joined by Wiss. He's gonna chase. Uh, that's it. I don't know about this chase. In comes Lone Druid. Admiral yeah. Bulldog. Uh, this is this is very very scrappy from from both teams, in fact. Yeah, and like when you have. The team that next KZ does, you always want to do this because you're getting so much track gold. Like two minutes ago, when this bounty was farming top, a minute ago, not even two minutes ago, he had an ogre axe and he didn't have any of the BKB uh, recipe. But now he picked up the mithril hammer, he picked up the BKB recipe, and he has a full BKB now. Not not even like two minutes ago because he got so many track kills in that fight. And it's... you don't want to be trading like this if you're. Zero, because Bounty is just too powerful, and it's... you have to play really clean against a Bounty Hunter. Oh yeah, and it's the supports as well, getting farm from all that track gold, you've got Mech up on the Disruptor, you've got a Sankin with the Blink Dagger, oh, here go, here we go, Eternal Envy gets caught out, oh. Refract was on cooldown as well. Oh. Easiest kill of Blast's life, and Mantis was coming in, looking for to help out, but not going to matter, Glimpse back, uh oh, Black wow. gets caught out into, an, uh, no Epicenter, no Burrow Strike up as well, there is so he brings him to the high ground as well. Mantis going to finish off Black, and they want more. Maybe they want to keep chasing. Is there any track? B is getting blinked upon. Double, double Burrow strike. Great play coming out from 570. Bamboo. Well, he's in trouble. Is this going to be the ultra kill yeah. coming from Bounty Hunter? It goes to the Sand King, but Bulldog still doing his job that in the bottom lane, but that did not go Literally, well. Literally, like I just explained, like how the Bounty Hunter got a BKB. And that was all his gold. Well, he just got 2.2k from track gold and the tower. Yikes. So, like, that should just show you the strength of how strong track is and why Bounty Hunter is such a priority pick right now. And with that fight one, the, the gold graph just jumps through the roof. About a 10k lead now. They're going to keep on going. They're going to get another tower to go their way. Mad style up on Stalkat, so they may just want to keep on pushing, try force the issue. He can start building towards his BKB as well if he wants to get that. An Admiral yeah, Bulldog. I mean, they all have their ultimates up pretty much. They didn't. They didn't expel for anything. Yeah, it's just the Batrider who's got three seconds to his ultimate. He's gonna get stunned down. He's gonna get focused. Actually, caught a bit out of position here. But here goes the Lunar ultimate as well as the Disruptor Silence. They're gonna get Admiral Bulldog. Or oh, are they? Shrewkin finishes him off. Luna is gonna uh, look to clean on up here as the Bounty Hunter tracks all over the place. And Black, he's gonna be the next hero to fall. He gets taken out and. Well, they get a Batrider, they lose a big fight, and it looks like the high ground is going to be breached. Manta style gets popped by Stalkat, they pop the drum charge, and Tier 3 tower, possibly even Rax at this point, going to be dropping at 22 minutes in, Yeah. after a lot of kills. Yeah, he bought a Yasha with all his gold he just made that I just talked about, and now he has 1.7k. <laughs> like, it's just ridiculous what Zero is doing. It's... Well... This, the, the gold income for Bounty When you've got 38 kills in 22 minutes, that's one team having almost two kills a minute. We're looking at two and a half to three kills a minute with all the combined kills. It's just Bounty Hunter having a field day. Not to mention all the levels, which I feel the Radiant team, they benefit a lot more from the levels. Here's like Sand King, Disruptor, Luna, Bounty Hunter. Having that fast level, 14, 15, 16, is much more important than heroes like Wisp, Templar Assassin, getting all those levels. They're, even Enchantress, these are not a, a level-dependent heroes. And not to mention... Team Zero aren't even getting the levels. Enchantress still just level nine. Yeah, and that Enchantress has no health. She has like seven seventy-seven, I think it was total health. Like, she's what item did Bounty get? He just has a Yasha. Okay, he, she's taking five hundred and crit. Ooh, here we go, bottom. Luna's the bait though. Luna's got backup. It's Batrider going to be coming in. Needs to grab the Sven. Grab the Sven soon. Glimpse gets used on the Wisp. Wisp gets sent back home. Double I don't know if they needed to do that. They, once again, they could have probably just killed both. I think they decided to play it safe. And well, yeah, I don't, I don't even know. I didn't even see disruptor at the start of the fight, but that that's the power of disruptor against Wisp that I was talking about. Such a ridiculous In cast range stage. as well, and it, it, the counter has really worked. And I think Next KZ have just played this pretty smart as far as expecting when the Wisp is going to be TPing. They've sent Luna out alone on two or three occasions. Like It's like, okay, Luna, just show yourself farming a lane. It's quite likely that Wisp plus one will come try gank you. And every time it's either Sand King there, that time it was the Disruptor with the Batrider. They're just kind of reading this Team Zero. I think Team Zero are just playing a bit too predictable. Yeah. 
And it looks like, well, Roshan not up for another couple of minutes here. So, so Zero doing a good job of just counter pushing this top lane. They want to just try four series back to defend, buy themselves some title farm without giving away kills. And that may be what happens. Oh, that Bamboo. Oh, that hurts. That hurts. Yeah, it was basically two hits. <laughs> the first three hits. <laughs> the first hit took him down to less than half HP. The, the shadow walk break with the Janada was about. Almost two thirds of his HP in in one right click. So to answer your question, were they doing a good job <laughs> with counter pushing without dying? No. Nope. Nope. Bambo down. No sir. Five hundred gold in bounty's pocket. <laughs> That's the thing. It's like it's like oh, just got, it's just to pick off on the, the the least farmed hero on the game, the lowest level hero. It's not giving away much. When it's track, every hero kill counts. Like you kill the squishiest support hero in the game, and it matters if there's a track on him. Yeah. And Luna has a, a full satanic. This is... <laughs> that's quite big, I've got to say. Uh, BKB coming on the Batrider as well. You've got Sanking, starting to build an Aghanim Scepter. Manta, Bounty Hunter. It's, it's big, although it looks like we are going to see... Can I push it mid? Are uh, they going to be giving up the kills? Here comes the TPs, Batriders first. There's more to come. Maybe see a TP in the front tower. They're not going to actually get the tower. It's not deniable either, so... Not going to see... The no tide hunter this slash that team zero. Well, he's got no BKB, but it looks like uh, more miscommunication. Black one to fight. The rest of his team said, "No, nah, let's get the hell out of here." Yeah, that was a good op opportunity to fight as well. But I mean, they d they didn't know. They had know. no idea that Bat was just charging in somewhat yeah. crazily. But all right, we'll be. Oh, they want this spirit bear. They're gonna try. And Get this spirit bear, it's just damn fast, too damn fast. The spirit bear's almost going to assault Chris. So, Admiral Bulldog at this point is the the only hope for the Dire team, I want to say. Yeah, I actually forgot about him. But with Luna as farmed as she is, yeah. and every actually every hero on Sentinel is, or Radiant, is really farmed. It's ridiculous. You, you mean, you've got 2k yeah. on a disruptor. This is just 26 minutes in. That's the other thing. It, it feels like we're looking at like 40 minute items for these heroes, for the, especially the support heroes. A free farm Luna, yeah. well, maybe you could get this up, but even, even a free farm Luna, this is amazing. The one hero who's not doing all that well is maybe the Bat Rider, still trying to build that BKB, but he's had a fantastic impact on this game regardless. Yeah. And Bat is such a good hero at isolating one target. Just. Picking a target and killing him, that one hero, you, you can't rely on one hero against a bat rider. Like, absolutely not. No chance. Because you're just going to get abducted, and then you're going to get oh. taken away like Black. Taken away. Did. Here we go. Black going to get caught out. And uh, Admiral Bulldog, he's he solo pushing the top he lane. Beat is out. Oh, he takes it home. Wow, great play from Beat. Is. He actually didn't take him to the fountain, but a bit to the side in the trees here, but. Problem is, now it's a, a 5v2 scenario at, under the racks, so they just say, okay, you want to save black? Go for it, we'll just take your racks. And. Fast GP saved black, and it was effective. Well, racks just do drop though. doesn't do anything. Oh, here goes the epicenter. In goes 570. Doesn't really do much except catch up beaters. Beaters gonna get taken out by a bow psych, and now the night, no tide hunter slash team zero mix. They're forced to run. Admiral Bulldog, he's dropping low, he's dropping very low. He gets taken out. Eternal Envy, last man standing, gets glimpsed back in. Actually blinks out after the glimpse, role played by him and Black. Yeah, Black actually still alive, thanks to uh, some strong support play coming out from this team. But the problem is they've now lost four Raxes and probably lost this game as there's just too much of a difference between the, the, the goal for the two teams. 20k difference and, well, no real hope for Team, team Zero at this point when you've got a level 9 Enchantress. Yeah, the so Luna had 2k gold. Right before entering the base, 4.6k. Like she's so farmed, and she bought a chrysalis actually, so she's going crit. Um, I think just the first hit crits with Glaive. I think that's how it interacts. Yeah, I'm, I'm not sure how. I think the Glaive, the Glaives. I mean, because you can get, oh, you can get some orb effects with Glaive. I, I remember how it, there was some which would like break. You couldn't. I remember Dota One. You couldn't get Sanjin Yasha on Luna. Otherwise, you just not have an attack animation. It was some crazy, crazy bug. But um, Team Zero, they're going for something a bit sneaky. The problem is Templar Assassin just walks in. The rest of the team smoked in. Templar Assassin says, "Oh, I'll just walk in." And it uh, looks like they know this Templar Assassin going to get grabbed. And here we go. This is the last stand for Team Zero. I've got to say. And it looks like it's not going to be a formidable one. Sven getting very low. Sven actually still alive. Templar Assassin is going to take the drop. And Black, well, he's... Oh, Black goes down to a creep in the bottom lane. Oh, poor Black. 
Four poor black. Story of the game, I've got to say. GG is called. I... Black going down at the bottom lane. Yeah. Story of the game. <laughs> it really has been 12 deaths to him. I mean, not, not just him. It was a real, just, bit of a miscommunication. Just not real. The coordination wasn't there. I feel the, the draft, the strategy with that, that initially a dueling, if they had the three heroes there from the start and controlled the jungle well, maybe they can go offensive tri lane. The problem is they were too late getting in the jungle. They had a Wisp who couldn't really offer much defensive capabilities. And they they paid the price. Next KZ take a, a fairly straightforward win, although there was moments where Team Team Zero looked like they could make something happen. I was just watching in game and uh, the same game Blink Burrow Strike both the Bear and uh, Admiral Bulldog. And he channeled Effie right after, and oh. first hit root by Admiral Bulldog. You know you're a good bear player when you first hit root that. <laughs> hey, triple kill for Admiral Bulldog. He's still fighting. Oh, well, wow, we actually did get longer. a triple kill. Bye back. He's not done. Has he got his spirit bed? No, he doesn't. <laughs> He's sending him black He's to stall. He's sending him black. Finish job, black. That's what he says. <laughs> Black can be his new spirit bear here. Not much of a yep. a war horse though, as uh, Luna. Luna going to take this game for for the team, and it's nice to see a, Lu a Luna pick work. And against I, I, all those kills, just really made it happen. Bounty Hunter once he came in had the track golden. Pretty straightforward stuff for next KZ once they get rolling. Anyways, guys. That's going to be game number one of the Ghosty League between NextKZ and Team Zero. We'll uh, be back soon with game number two. Joining me with Paint at Gold, you can find him on Twitter, paint, at PaintDota. And I'm, of course, Gods at GGNetGods on Twitter. Be sure to follow us, support us. And uh, Paint, of course, will be announcing, I believe, some new exciting news, maybe in the future. Maybe not. Who knows? He's up to mysterious stuff with a new team of his. But we'll be back soon with game number two. Yep.